All right, my brother, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get your ex back, or at least how to move on fast and powerfully. Now, this is a subject that I am very, very accomplished in, because I've had about 4,000 men come through genuine attraction, and the main thing that we deal with is betrayal situations, or a woman who walks away and he's trying to get her back, or he's trying to turn himself into a guy who never gets cheated on again. And so we do that very successfully. And so this video is kind of like a little bit of a taste of how that process works. And make sure you watch this whole thing because every time you fuck it up, it's another nail in the coffin. What she needs is consistency from you. The more consistent you are, the faster everything can turn around for you. But every time you mess up, you're right back to square one. So let's get started. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. The number one mistake men face when they find out that the woman is not in love with him is chasing. His entire world is like emotionally ripped apart from him. Like the rug has been pulled out from under him and he doesn't know what to do. So he scrambles and does anything, anything possible to try to get her back. And the problem is she sees this as a desperate attempt to just win her back instead of making positive changes for himself. And because he doesn't really want to make these positive changes because he just wants to get her back so he can feel better, this destabilizes the entire situation. She doesn't want to be his mommy just there to make him feel better. She needs him to be the rock and to be powerful in his being. And so when she leaves him, she tells him that she's not in love with him anymore or that she just wants a breakup or she's cheating on him and he flips his shit and he loses his mind and he starts to chase after her or starts to spy on her and see what she's doing and contacting the other guy and raising hell and threatening her. All she sees is an unhinged child having a temper tantrum. This is not a strong man and she loses more and more respect for him. So your first step is stop reaching out and chasing her. Stop trying to get her to do anything. In fact, if you were a guy who had any self-respect, you would say, oh, you don't want to be with me? Well, that's a massive turnoff. I don't really want to be with you either. I know this because this is what I had to transform for myself. Even before I was married previously, whenever a woman decided that she wasn't interested in me, I would lose all interest. Oh, well, why would I want to be with you? Not because I'm being like angry or bitter. Like, why would I chase after somebody who doesn't want me? If I have any kind of self-respect, I at least stand still. But I'm certainly not going to chase. And what you're going to find is in your dating and your relationships, men don't do the chasing. Women chase men. Society will tell you the opposite, that men should chase in court and give them flowers, do all this stuff, and convince this woman he's good enough to be with her. This makes her lose respect for you. And if she doesn't have respect for you, she's not going to be absolutely turned on by you. Women chase after the winners. And you have to demonstrate that you're a fucking winner. And when you stop chasing her, you let go of control. Is your wife telling you you're too controlling right now? That's because you're trying to control her. I'm not trying to control her, man. I just need answers. No, you're trying to find a way to manipulate the situation so you can get her back. That's fucking control. Let's be very clear that you're being very manipulative and you're trying to control her because you can't handle your own emotional state. And you're driven with anxiety and you don't know if you should stay or you should go or any of this stuff. And so you're caught in what I call the nexus of indecision. And your inability to be in a state where you don't have to be in control is what's driving you crazy. Most guys who are conflict averse are very controlling subtly. They're organized, probably have an engineering degree, they probably run a business, they're detail oriented, they have a problem of perfectionism. These are all like very controlling type of things and they don't know when to let go of control and to just trust. If you were a high value guy, you would trust that you are attractive. You would trust that women like you. You would trust that you could figure out the right thing to do without being so reactionary. You can't accept the situation. Most guys can't accept the situation because they can't accept themselves. They can't accept the fact that they fucked up royally, they're a failure. Maybe they've been victimized, but they sit in this place of victimhood mindset, which keeps them stuck, which means that everything else in the world is more important. Everything else is affecting them and they can't do anything about it. You can. But you have to accept where you're at and realize that the relationship that you're in now is not the relationship that you had. In fact, that relationship is fucking dead. It's dead. It's not coming back. And really, do you really want to come back to that situation? It wasn't that good for you. It wasn't that good for her. That's why she wanted out. It was like she was a bird in a cage and she finally got away. And now you're trying to like wrestle her back into this cage. The bird don't want to be in a cage, bro. Leave her alone. In fact, your ability to move on fast is going to flip the switch. You have to break the pair bond. 
And when you get with a woman, the honeymoon phase is the creation of a new pair bond, and it is exciting, and it's fun, and it's amazing. But the fear of losing that pair bond is what drives you insane, and you have to walk right into the fear, walk right into it. Break it. Break the pair bond. Because if you don't break it, then when you try to re-engage with her further in the future, you won't have a new honeymoon cycle. In fact, your entire relationship will be defined by the pain of the past. If you don't want this defined by the pain of the past, you don't have a birdcage built for her, then you have to break the pair bond. In other words, you have to get over her as fast as possible. And if you do, then she will see that you're not grasping for her anymore. She'll see that you, she can come to you and you, she can just hang with you and have fun and flirt and play. But in this space where you're freaking the fuck out all the time, you can't play, you can't flirt, you can't do anything because everything that you're gonna do is going to somehow suddenly manipulate the situation to, into, are you coming back? Do you still love me? And then it's pathetic and it makes you look weak, which means she loses respect, which means she loses retraction, which means she doesn't wanna be with you and she can't trust you. So what do you do with all this extra free time? Now that you don't have to worry about her, now that she's moved out of the house and you have your kids only half, half and half, you focus on yourself. You focus on all the things you should have been doing this entire time that you were with her that you did not do. And you know what these things are. You should be focusing on your body and your health and your relationship with God and your own personal development and your relationship with yourself. You should be focusing on your business. You should be focusing on your faith in God. You should be focusing on your children and maybe even focusing on what it is that men need to do to be attractive for women. And I'll give you a hint. 99% of that is shit you would do naturally if you got out of your own fucking way. You see, we don't need all this pickup and game and all this other stuff that you're gonna see all these influencers doing. All we have to do is unleash that savage motherfucker within you and have him come out to play. That guy who is unrelenting and unfearful of everything in life and goes for what the fuck he wants. We let that savage motherfucker loose, we know he's gonna come from a good place because you're already a good guy. You already have a lot of heart. You care about people a lot. You care about your wife, your kids, and everybody else around you. So I'm not worried about you turning into a manipulative jerk. I'm not worried about you turning into this psychopath who just takes advantage of people when he becomes unleashed. And you shouldn't worry about it either because you'll always be tempered with your own heart. And we get that guy to come out to play, everything he does is magic. He's witty. He's funny, he's flirtatious, he knows when to take risks, he can feel into women, he knows exactly what she wants, he can see what she finds attractive, and he knows how to dress, and he knows how to live his life. That's the motherfucker we want to see. Let's say you've done this. Let's say you broke the pair bond. Let's say that you've got yourself into this place where you're feeling like you're firing on all cylinders again, which is average, by the way, in two months for guys in my program. Average, I know. I've got like 4,000 guys go through, I've got the data. And if you want to get there in two months, this is what you do. All that stuff I was saying previously, if you can unleash that savage guy and realize, break that pair bond and start moving forward in your life powerfully and awesome, you have now created a seductive lifestyle. And from this seductive lifestyle, you can now become a soul seducer. Now, I'm not teaching you pick up and game and all that stuff. I'm not interested in that shit. I'm interested in how can we access your soul and leverage that to reach straight into her fucking soul and let her see the kind of guy that you are that touches her deeply. Spiritual connection. If you want to have a woman who's absolutely devoted to you, absolutely adores you, absolutely appreciates you, and wants you sexually all the fucking time, this is what she's craving. Can he reach my soul and touch me as a woman, touch me as a person, as a human being, having a spiritual experience, and this guy that I can be a ride or die with who's fucking got me. And once you have done this, once you've gotten yourself to be this guy, and you don't have to be all the way that guy. If you're just 20% of that guy, that's like 95% more than like almost every guy is even trying to do. Now you're in a place where you can just re-engage with her. And trust me when I say, you won't even have to reach out first. When she sees this motherfucker on social media going out there and crushing it, and this guy that's being talked about by friends and neighbors and her girlfriends are mentioning all the shit that you're doing and your kids are talking about you, and they're telling her all the cool things you're doing, all you're doing is living an amazing life. And so she's going to get curious and she's gonna wanna see, is this true? Did this guy actually change? Maybe I was the problem. If she starts to say that maybe I was the problem, you've already won. Because this means that she's now open to changing and growing and playing the game of her own eternal spiritual expansion as well. 
Well, we've already turned that on for you at this point. If we can get that turned on for her, now you can have a spiritual soul connection. And I'm here to tell you, soulmates are not found. They are created first by you seducing your own soul and creating a seductive life and then seducing her soul from this place. Because this woman will change anything about herself to be with that kind of guy. She is with you to grow in a spiritual way. And when you stop growing, she's like, I got to get the fuck out. And you're like, how do I win her back? You're never going to win her back from this place because this is her spirituality on the line. This is who she is on the line. You start worrying like, oh, is, this a, is she in a midlife crisis? Yeah, she is. Because she's forgot herself. She's forgot where she's going. She's forgot what she needed on a soul level. And so what she's doing is she's trying to go and find herself again, which is a key thing she must do. And you can't get in the middle of that. She, all these women always say that. I just need to find myself. She does. And you do too. And then when you go find yourself, you play a totally different game. You might not even want her at that point. A lot of the times when guys come into the program, they go and they make this shift, they make this pivot. Their life is absolutely fucking awesome. They go and look at her and they're like, she didn't do anything. She just slept with five more dudes. And now the kids don't want to go over to her house. It's already stabilized. And she, she shows these kids every guy she dates. And you're like, I haven't dated anybody. My life is fucking awesome. The kids want to be with me. Why would I want to go back to that? It's like, well, that's a good point, bro. Why would you? So the thing is, is we come up with a solution. We come up with a solution by coming to the solution within you. So in a nutshell, that's how you get your ex back. Sounds pretty simple. There's a lot of nuance to it. Mainly the nuance is teaching you how to transform and pivot into the guy that you know you need to be. It's not the guy I'm going to tell you how to be. When you work with me, I figure out what goes on with you and I get that motherfucker to come out to play. Whatever I have to do to give that guy permission, whatever experiences, evolutions I have to have you go through to ensure that that happens so that you completely rise as a man and as an individual for your kids. And let's put it this way, you don't really have a choice. Because if you keep operating this way, if you keep doing the same shit you're doing, guess what's happening? Your kids are gonna follow in your footsteps. It doesn't, kids don't listen to what you say. They do what you do. Let's be clear right now. They're gonna do exactly what the fuck you're doing right now. So if you want your little boys to chase after women who cheat on them over and over and over again, yeah, just keep doing this. If you wanna have an awesome relationship, if you wanna be powerful in yourself, then you have to be the one to move forward. If you want to join the Broken to Badass program or the new upcoming Soul Seducer program, there's a link in the description below. You'll go in there, you can check out the program. You can see what it's all about. You can see the little documentary about the guys that come through the studio and the massive transformations they have in their lives and the nearly 4,000 guys that have come through it. And also, you'll have an opportunity to set up a call with one of the guys make sure you're actually a good fit. Because if you're not a good fit, I'm not going to have you invest your money here. That would be fucking stupid. I don't want refunds or anything like that. I want you to be successful. Your investment is investment in you, and I want to make sure that you are making the right choice. That's why we gate it with a call. So if you want to do that, you can set up that call there. And if you're going through a breakup right now and you're losing your absolute mind and you're chasing after and becoming this weird stalker guy, which all guys are tempted to do, and I know it because I did it myself and it's fucking weird, then watch this video right here. Anyways, brother, I love you very much. I really look forward to the opportunity to get to know you personally. And I'll see you in the next video.